When people think of Asian medicine, they typically think of traditional Chinese medicine. But today on the show, we have another type of Asian therapy called Japanese Meridian Therapy. Hi, my name is Cameron Moffat, and you're watching Choices. And on this show, we interview healthcare practitioners from around the Vancouver Island and the Gulf Islands and discuss with them the choices they offer us for our healthcare. I'd like to introduce and thank Dr. Katriana Heigelman from coming on the show. She is the owner of Inspire Acupuncture and a practitioner of the Japanese Meridian Therapy. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having Let's me. Let's start off by discussing a little bit about uh, your training and what is involved to actually start practicing this form. Yes, so I'm trained as doctor of traditional Chinese medicine, mm -hmm. um, as everybody in BC has to be in order to practice oriental medicine. Okay. Um, in the fifth year of my practice, I got exposed to uh, studies by Ikera Masakazu Sensei, a teacher of Japanese style meridian therapy. Okay. And I incorporated it into my practice, and I found in um, my practice that patients are really satisfied with this type of um, acupuncture as it's a little bit gentler um, than uh, the, the well-known common acupuncture. Right. Now we're going to be doing a demo in a little while and you'll have a chance to see the difference of the needles between the Japanese version of the needles and the Chinese needles and you'll notice they are quite a difference. Yes. Um, what a little bit about your typical cases that people come into the, your clinic for? What would you typically see and then what also do you not so typically see coming in? Well, in oriental medicine, we um, are holistic practitioners. So um, yes, we all attract certain type of cases, but mostly we uh, treat the patient, not the disease. Right. So uh, we are able to, let's say, treat someone with gynecological issues and um, perhaps two patients with the same Western disease will um, receive completely different treatment mm. because we look at them as an individual and tailor the treatment accordingly. Um, where, for example, um, if the patient has completely different, two different patients have different disease, they might receive exactly the same treatment because they are within a certain pattern or within a certain constitution that requires that treatment. Um, so we look at disease a little bit different. We look at it as an imbalance of, uh, of human phy physiology. Okay. Now, when you say human physiology, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you, you're also looking at the balance between the yang energy and the yin energy. Is that not the sort of the basis of all oriental medicine? Correct. So maybe you can explain to the viewers a little bit, of what do you mean by yang energy and yin energy? And why is that so important in your diagnosis? Right. Um, so in oriental medicine, we want to balance different energies. And the, uh, the number one principle is the principle um, of yin and yang. Um, that follows the eight principles of qi and blood, qi and blood, yin and yang, which um, are subject to constant uh, uh, movement or constant struggle to achieve equilibrium in a human body. And they become um, imbalanced when the disease occurs or exhausted when we become tired mm -hmm. and, uh, and the disease, whether acute or chronic, can settle in the body. Okay. Um, the yin and yang, um, it's a concept of a duality in nature. So we have a daytime, nighttime, we have sun, we have moon, we have water, we have fire. So everything on this planet in our universe has those two extremes. Sure. And uh, that's how that medicine has been tailored for 6,000 years around observation of the nature and how those two energies are interacting. Okay, so that's why you were explaining earlier that two people could have the exact same Western type of disease and yet they're, what's really going on could be very, very different. Correct. And so I gather in your training, you're, mm -hmm. you're taught to look at the individual and find what that imbalance is for that person. That's is right. Is that correct? Correct. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay, what we, something that, um, what do most people come in and see you for? I understand that you can probably work with many things, but what do you typically see come in your, your practice? Um, perhaps it will be easier to say that I have uh, three or five different typical issues that, uh, that I treat. Um, they usually are concerns about digestive system, so something around digestion, uh, whether it's uh, um, IBS or, or uh, chronic abdominal pain or whatever it will be, but a lot of people come nowadays for um, digestive complaints or allergies around food, right. food sensitivities. Um, a lot of gynecological issues as well. I see a lot of people for infertility uh, or uh, postpartum issues, uh, mm -hmm. fatigue, uh, depression, mm -hmm. 
uh, I also treat a little bit children because um, I'm trained in something called shonishin, which is a non-insertive technique of Japanese um, uh, acupuncture for children. So you're not actually inserting the needles? No. Oh, well, the children must appreciate that. Very much. The My own kids do. do. <laughs> yeah, the children, exactly. Okay. So that uh, allows you then to work with children without the trauma of being needled. Absolutely. Um, in classics, uh, we believe that um, children shouldn't receive uh, needles in early age because it injures their kidney. So it traumatizes them and makes them scared. Okay. So unless extreme circumstances, we don't like to uh, perform acupuncture, insertive acupuncture for right. children. Okay. Because in the, um, the Chinese way of thinking or the, the Asian way of thinking of the uh, organs, is f uh, the fear not inherent within the kidney? Correct. Okay, yes. so you wouldn't want to bring in any fear. It would damage the kidneys at a young age. That's right. Oh, okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell me, before we break now for the uh, demo, tell me a little bit about uh, the training you received. Uh, is it, how is it different then in your advanced training than what you received in your more traditional Chinese medicine training? Right. Um, the Japanese meridian therapy is really focused on rediscovering classics. Uh, so um, the modern traditional Chinese medicine is very uh, wonderful base, I find. But with the Japanese um, meridian therapy, there is a lot of finesse around the technique. Uh, so the needling is very uh, gentle and delicate and very uh, palpatory based. So I often touch patient's meridian or abdomen or body in general to find which points I'm going to choose. And I will also want a specific response to see where I'm at with my treatment. Okay. Uh, as opposed to inserting the needles, letting them rest for 20 minutes, and perhaps um, uh, that might be the, the regular treatment that you receive mostly nowadays with acupuncture. That was my experience when I did actually uh, see Dr. Heigelman that for the hour and a half, the first treatment, uh, you were constantly working on me, more or less. Yes. You were following the treatment along. Okay, we're going to stop now and take a bit of a break and set things up for a demonstration. We'll be back in just a moment and you'll have a chance to see uh, Katriana actually working um, on a demonstration. Hi, welcome back. We're actually going to have a demonstration now uh, by Dr. Heigelman on how various aspects of her practice work. We're going to be looking a little bit something called MOXA and she'll be demonstrating you some of the needles that she uses and then also a little bit about how she actually goes about doing an assessment. Okay. Great. So maybe Welcome. I will start, thank you very much. Maybe I will start with a needle just okay. to show the um, difference how um, the Japanese acupuncture needle is very, very fine. Mm -hmm. They're about as thin as your hair. Right. You see, I don't know if you can see on the camera. Yeah, maybe just set it. So for those of you that have yeah, not been tiny. to a traditional Chinese practitioner, these needles are quite a bit thinner than you would normally see and, um, and a lot shorter as well. So they're quite fine and they're very, very uh, flexible. Mm -hmm. um, they don't break, so they're very, very safe. Well, most needles don't break, they shouldn't. Um, all the needles in um, North America are disposable. So after I use it with a patient, they have to be properly disposed. Um, I will show on me how little um, sensation there is upon insertion. So this is pretty much it, what we wow. need. We get a picture of that just... Okay, so, and I notice you don't go in very far. It's no. very, very slight penetration. That's right. You explained to me before the show that you're also dealing with the energetics of the body by going in very slightly. There isn't that trauma to the skin. That's right. We are um, in meridian therapy needling quite shallow. Okay. Um, it's a little bit different uh, than in uh, traditional Chinese medicine sense, uh, but we still are able to achieve very good therapeutic results. Sure. Um, so working with very subtle energy. Okay. And um, this type of insertion will be more common on hands and feet, okay. where skin is quite innervated and the hands and feet are very sensitive. Sure, okay, mm -hmm. all right. So what else do you have to show us? Uh, so I will palpate our model's abdomen and see if we can find some tender spots, okay. uh, which will signify some sort of energetic imbalances and physiological things for me. I okay. might not share it with the audience. Okay. And then I will try to release the tension from okay. the abdomen. Uh, so Wonderful. let's see. <coughs> so I need your feedback of if something feels tender out here. No. Nope. This one, a little bit. little bit there, okay? And then a little bit here. Yes. 
Yes. So let's start with those two here. Um, I would say this one here will be a little bit more important to start with. And let's see if I can release it first with pressure only. Okay. If not, I will start doing my moxa and my magnets. Okay, all right. Now, can you explain to us why you're working down at the foot? Yes, so this area in um, abdominal diagnosis corresponds to liver, mm -hmm. even though the physiological liver or anatomically liver is positioned here. Right. Um, it has to do with um, um, venous network return okay. and how it's distributed in the abdomen. So this is my point where um, I test, and then I would like to release it by working with a liver four point on the liver meridian. Okay. So let's see if I can do that. So the, for those of you who are not is familiar with the concept of meridians, that is the energy flow around the body from the various organs. And there are very distinct patterns in how that flows. And so right now the liver meridian is being worked both with both hands right now. Okay. How does it feel now? Better. Better. Good. So to make it feel even more better, we'll perform Moxibastion on okay. liver four. Okay. How about that? That sounds very interesting. Okay. Let's have a look. So while you're working, could you explain to the viewers what Moxibustion <coughs> actually is? Uh, so the ancient character for acupuncture, it includes the character for the needle and fire and moxa. Um, and um, the most traditional way to do is to blend the needles with the moxibustion technique. Okay. Um, moxa is actually a herb, um, magwort. It's made from magwort herb. Uh, this particular one is called gold moxa and it comes from Japan and it... Um, has to be processed and dried for 12, 14 years before it has its therapeutic result. Oh. Um, so I made uh, prior, I made this nice snake of moxa, which makes it easier for me to apply. Mm -hmm. You might feel a little bit of heat on the foot. Oh, this is my nervousness in on camera. And it just burns down very quickly. It burns down very quickly and I pinch it just before it reaches the skin. So it's not too uncomfortable for the patient. You should do seven cones. So the idea then is to stimulate the energy at that point? Is that what the, what the moxibustion is doing? That's right. So I'm working with point um, liver four on the liver meridian mm -hmm. that corresponds to liver, but also corresponds to uh, metal in the five, um, five elements theory, five, okay. five phases theory. So this one in particular will move stagnation in that area, in that quadrant of the abdomen. Up through here. That's right. Okay. Let's see if that will be enough. I'm sorry if it's too hot. It's okay? Okay. After a while, patients really love it because it feels quite comforting. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are a little nervous at first to, be, to have Mark Sebastian performed on their body. I even do it on my son who is one year old and he doesn't mind. He doesn't mind. Well, no. <laughs> he's a lucky guy. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so we have a little bit of smudge of our moxa here, but that washes off. And let's see, how is this area? How is that it sensation? Feels good. Feels yeah, good. It's gone, yeah. It's pretty much gone. Yeah, I feel it also more malleable to touch right okay. now. My fingers can go deeper with so no hardness. The stagnant energy then was causing the hardness that you were palpating right. and now it's flowing more, so hence not as, stag uh, not as, um, as tough. As That's right, wonderful. correct, yes. We could possibly check. Actually, the point number one has released quite a bit too, okay. would you say? Uh, there is still a tiny bit of tension, yeah. 
we could, yes, right there. Um, let's see if we can do anything about that. <clears throat> so just work with acupressure or for speed of the show, we'll try to use magnets. So let's show the, can you maybe do that on this arm here? Yes. And let's show the viewers what you're using there because this is quite significant. This is a nice way that someone can go home with that still on your skin after the treatment. And how long would you leave it on for? You can leave it for up to two days. Two days and it continues to work. Yes. Wonderful. Um, sometimes I'll use magnets, um, for example, on children or elderly or anyone who's sensitive. Mm -hmm. I might use micro needles or magnets. Okay. And these would be take home treatments. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay. While you're doing that, I'm yes. going to say goodbye to the, to the audience. Yes. And uh, thank them. Okay. So we're running out of time. Thank you very much for watching Choices. Uh, next few episodes on Choices are going to be a practitioner studying and practicing uh, something called Body Talk. And we're going to be having a naturopath coming on and doing a type of therapy for joints called prolotherapy, which anybody who's had an injured joint will find uh, quite interesting. I'd like to thank you for coming on the show. It's been very, very interesting. Thank, thank you, you, Dr. Muffet. You My pleasure. are very welcome thank and you. have yourself a good day. Perfect. Uh, Kim, you can enjoy the, the treatment <laughs> and hopefully things keep working. Now, how long should she leave that on for? Up to two days. Up to two days. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, if Kim was coming back for another treatment, what would you expect to see happen? Would there be any ch uh, changes? Would you be looking again at the same liver meridian points? Right. Okay. Um, very, very likely, if she came with a digestive complaint, I would see that improving. Mm -hmm. There would be significant Wonderful. improvement. Mm -hmm. Well, we all need help with our digestive systems these days. So once again, thank you very much. My name is Cameron Moffat, and be on behalf of all the crew here at Choices and at Shaw, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next episode.